Well, let's get to the view from Israel. Joining us now is a journalist, uh, Yotam Confino. Confino, Confino, sorry, did I pronounce your surname wrong? Just want to make sure that that's... Confino. Right. Confino. 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 Yotam Confino. Um, so it seems to me, you know, you, you're hearing a chorus now, people from the West, whether it's the EU, whether it's Biden, whether it's our very own Rishi Sunak, all saying, no, 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 please don't react, chalk this up as a win. I assume that most people in Israel don't want to see all-out war in the region, but you can't exactly turn around and say, oh, yeah, that's fine, Iran, don't worry about it, you didn't actually manage to kill anyone. Yeah, that's exactly what people are thinking. That's exactly what the government is also saying. No country in the world would allow or accept 120 ballistic missiles fired uh, at your territory and 30 cruise missiles, 170 drones. No country would accept that. And the same way as no, no country would accept uh, the October the 7th um, from, from happening and, and, and not retaliate. So when we hear Sunak and Biden about de-escalation, this is something they have to say. It would be odd if Biden and, and Sunak went out and said, yes, let's escalate the situation. No responsible leader would do that. So what they're saying publicly, I think, is what to be expected. But behind closed doors, I'm confident that they're giving Israel their backing and doing not whatever they want, but some sort of a response will be backed behind closed doors, I think. Yeah, yeah. So I'd like to see what Biden and uh, Sunak and Macron and the gang would do if their countries or our country was uh, attacked by over 300 missiles overnight uh, and they turn around to the populations of those countries, uh, Sunak to Britain, and said, well, we just got attacked by 320 missiles last night, but here's what we're going to do about it. Absolutely nothing. Uh, it's not going to play well. So I think uh, not only uh, uh, will Israel... Uh, retaliate. I think it's quite right that it retaliates. It has to retaliate. What form do you think that retaliation will take? I would put forward my theory that uh, Israel might go for uh, nuclear sites, potential nuclear uh, launching pads, military targets. It's quite uh, ironically, Netanyahu has never been more <coughs> unpopular than he is right now, but he's got a golden opportunity to justify an attack on Iran's nuclear sites. Netanyahu has wanted to do this for years, but he's quite indecisive and he doesn't like conflict. But he's now with his back against the wall and he's got a golden opportunity to go after some of, uh, of Iran's nuclear sites. The thing is that if Israel wants to fully destroy Iran's nuclear program, they need the United States because the United States has the sort of bombs that can penetrate deep into the ground and actually destroy these uh, reactors. So Israel could do some damage, but it would not be able to destroy its nuclear reactors. There are other, uh, obviously, possibilities for Israel. They could go after IIPC targets in Iran, army bases. They could assassinate another uh, RIGC commander. They could also hit some of their proxies. They could launch a cyber attack. Really, Israel has many options here, and Israel has hit Iran many times before inside Iran. So I think we're going to see something quite, um, I would say, advanced, simply because Israel has the intelligence and the capabilities to carry out uh, quite a, a precise attack. I mean, Iran have turned around and said, well, look, if you respond to what we did, we're going to respond again. It's going to be a gazillion times worse. And you know what it is we were going to do, was the warning coming out of Tehran. Are they sabre-rattling here, pretending they've got a nuclear weapon? Or is there a real fear that they actually do have something that could cause a huge amount of catastrophic damage? Look, they, they could cause a lot of damage on Israel. Just because Israel successfully intercepted 99% of all of the drones and missiles, it doesn't mean that that's all that Iran has. If Iran goes full on and fires pretty much everything they have, including mobilizing Hezbollah and everyone else around in the region, that would cause tremendous damage in Israel. There's no doubt about that, and especially Hezbollah, because Hezbollah is so close to Israel's border that Israel doesn't have the same time to shoot down uh, the, the, the rockets and the missiles and the drones as they have with Iran. So if Hezbollah starts firing their 150,000 missiles all across Israel, Israel will not be able to, to shoot down 99%. That's impossible. So if Iran really wants to get into a war, they could cause tremendous damage to Israel, but vice versa. Uh, Iran would not be the same country if Israel goes full on and attacks Iran.